sorry guys, I'm not used to not used to losing it. My own my own games. I'm supposed to be the game master, not the game disaster. But uh hey hey guys, it's Java Java Papa Jovich. Let's let's play, let's watch me play, let's watch Java Papa play. Uh uh, I guess uh, things are a little bit different, you know, I, I'm not always in control of my surroundings, they just kind of appear, uh, and you have to make do, uh, in that situation. But anyway, today's Monday. Uh, like the song says, it's just another manic Monday. Uh, I tell you, I don't know who wrote that song. I think it was Prince. It's full of all kinds of blasphemy. The ladies, fun day is Sunday. Sunday should not be the fun day. Sunday should be God's one day. Uh, 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 of course, the whole week is his, but that's the day that he says, now shall rest. And, and yet, here we are having sex with Valentino by some kind of Italian stream. Which is just is just terribly horrific and swarthy and, and just all kinds of sick bodily sweats and what have you. And sewage, ugh. It, Italy is the worst exposed sewage uh, in all of Europe. But alas, uh, uh, Monday should not be manic. I would say it's more depressive. Uh, uh, things in my mind at least tend to fall apart on Monday. Uh, 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 it's just sort of anger. You know, I mean, it's like being kicked. It's being being like a sleeping dog, and all of a sudden your master comes over and kicks you. You know, and that's what in my mind is Monday, and that's not manic. That's not that's not running around. That's not that's not uh, that's not getting things done. That's not swirling your head. That's just anger and depression. Uh, that's just that's just me depressing depressive Monday. But I guess the the alliteration with manic Monday uh, it just wouldn't work with depressing Monday. Uh, but anyway, today's game is wonderful end of the world. Uh, yeah, if it's fitting to go with the the, the, the framework of uh, mental diseases and what have you, uh, because there's a kind of fatality involved. But uh, alas, the wonderful end of the world by Deja Bond Games. We played one of their other games, and I think this is the better game. Uh, of course, it's the complete game. It's a shorter game. It's a fun romp. You'll get it done, and you'll be done, and then you won't be able to do anything because it's the end. And once the world ends, there's nothing more. Uh, so let's play, let's play, let's watch me, let's watch Shop Up Play, the wonderful end of Bond Games, bringing you quality video games. Alright, so this is the game. Years. First thing you'll notice is there's no widescreen support. There's also not many options to change any kind of uh, graphic or uh, display settings. Um, and the volume as well is very minimalist. This is the low, medium, high, or off. Uh, it is kind of conversational, which is, which is unique to see uh, from, from, from a game, option screen. It kind of reminds me of those uh, RPG games that all have the little personality quizzes and then formulate uh, what kind of character you are. Uh, in that sense, this is very similar, except that paradigm is applied to the options. Uh, and uh, that kind of quirky paradigm is also applied to the entire game. It's, it's a little bit playful. Uh, look at the title, it's, it's ironic. So how is the end of the world wonderful? Did you tell me that? Well, I guess because you're the one who's causing it. Ho ho. Uh, it's also unique that you're, you're a lady. This is uh, a little bit tough on me, because I am not uh, brushed up on my lady being skills. But uh, thankfully, it's not that important. Uh, because you're essentially a blob in this game. I think you're only a lady in like spirit. Uh, if that can can be said of, of, of existence. Uh, and this is it's, uh, let, let this run give you a rundown uh, uh, to know what you're watching without me having to. It is very 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 basic. Um, the skill in the game. Uh, and the challenge it. comes in figuring out what order to uh, absorb these objects. Um, so, for instance, you know, you don't want to get caught up uh, on, s on some of the smaller objects, or the bigger objects. The idea is you got to get the smaller ones first. If you try to get the bigger ones first, you can't, and you'll bump and you'll bounce back and you'll waste time. Uh, and there are three different modes. Time mode, uh, some kind of other mode, and then there's free run mode where you just kind of dingle about the level and pick up what you want. Uh, a lot of these assets I noticed are recycled from other indie games. I think it was created using some kind of uh, some kind of low cost, uh, you know, uh, asset library, uh, which doesn't bother me. I mean, the game is there, and this is a nice uh, first effort, I guess. I don't know if it's Deja Bond Games' first game, but uh, it is. It is interesting. I mean. This it's the kind of game that a child would would be amazed by. I would be amazed by this if I was a child back in the past. I'm still kind of amazed by this now. Just the fact that the game is constantly uh, 
you know, re retooling just the scope. The perspective and the scope is constantly being changed. And I like a game that can can do that, can 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 thwart your expectations of perspective, constantly recycle perspective, oh, something wow. new all the time. Your final uh, grade is A plus. You see, first well level, uh, you're given you're given report cards at the end. Uh, it's not that difficult. I beat this game in like uh, two hours. I think that's the way they say you can do. There's actually an achievement for beating it all uh, in, your, in one sitting. Uh, and I've there's no Steam Cloud support, uh, so all of my settings were reset. Uh, it's not that big a deal. Uh, uh, so I'm, uh, what can what can you say? It is interesting how how abstract a lot of this is. I mean, granted, they say it's the end of the world, but what you're interacting with is in the world per se. And maybe that's what they're going for. Maybe they're trying to get you to to conceptualize what a world is. Uh, and I think right now we're inside of like an arcade. We're in kind of inside of a Pac-Man clone, uh, and and I, I like that to, to be to be. I mean, this isn't this isn't realistic, but it is an abstract idea. It is it is it is a concept. It is an idea of a world, Pac-Man, a Pac-Man world. So I think I think that's that's what problem I could say with the title. Maybe you should have called it the wonderful end of worlds or some worlds. Uh, by saying the world, it seems a little bit too. Uh, the definite article is a little bit too deceptive because it is not the case. This is not the end of the world. I mean, you don't travel to to Asian countries, to Arabic countries, to to European countries. In fact, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say there is any kind of country. And you'd expect a country to be in the world. Look at that globe at the top of the screen. You know, you think this is Earth. This is the world, but it's it's not. It's very it's very like uh you know it's very abstract. And I guess the idea that's embodied here, if you were to look at it in like a postmodern sense, the idea of the world of world in a developed this is what world means to a developed uh, Western country, you know, video game. That's what world means. Uh, and I think uh, you know, I don't know how deep they they conceptualize these ideas when they're creating the game. But I mean, it is something to look at and to think about. Uh, and I like games that don't force you to have a narrative. I like games that invite you to create your own narrative. Uh, so, I mean, maybe this is a parable on consumption in developed Western countries. Uh, you're just willy-nilly absorbing everything you can get your, your grimy hands on, regardless of shape, size, color. Uh, gr granted, okay, I'll tell you here now, a lot of the stuff, everything in this game, essentially, is very clean. Uh, you know, with, what with the apocalyptic kind of, kind of jive, you'd expect to see a little bit darker imagery, maybe some corpses burning. Uh, then again, like I say, there's a kind of, there's a kind of, a wink and a nod. Uh, the end here is, is the end as conceived by perhaps a developed Western country. It's, it's nothing direct, it's nothing, it's nothing violent. Uh, well, there's a certain sense of, sanit of mor mortal sanitation, uh, in effect, uh, here, going on here. So end is, end, I would say, would, would, uh, be best captured by the word like the end of a movie. That would be the end. The end is the, is the ultimate, uh, destination, but it is nothing like painful or, or destructive. Uh, and that's the kind I think the wink and the nod here isn't that, like, wonderful an end, uh, in a sense. The, uh, end of round. Uh, the, the wink and the nod, the, the cute, uh, tell well here is done. that, uh, this is the end of consumption. This is the inevitable end of consumption. Uh, just more and more until I guess you blow your wad. Uh, I w that's what I would like to see. I would like to see the end of this game, uh, your character, like, digs her hand in her wallet and sees her credit cards maxed out or something. Uh, that would be a fu funny, a funny one. Uh, they don't do that in this game. It just ends and then you go back and you try to get a higher score than you did. Uh, I mean, but, uh, you know, you don't want to be too heavy-handed. I'm glad they weren't too heavy-handed. I'm glad that they managed to create this, this kind of, uh, narrative-free, uh, exploration of ideas using assets which work, I guess, not very original. I, I like that how they how they appropriated something else, which is what consumption is. Consumption is appropriate is reappropriation. You know, it's it's nothing it's it's making the outside the inside. Uh and so I think in their design philosophy, they accomplish that as well by, by reusing all these uh, kind of uh, asset libraries that have been used before in other games, um, which are kind of 
you know, not produce. They're not sui generis. These aren't things that the company cre created of their own will. I've, I've heard the, a lot of the music in here and, like, you know, a lot of other bad indie games. Not this is bad. Uh, but there you go. I mean, play the game. Like, open open your mind. Ask yourself, you know, what what it, outside of what you're doing in the game, ask yourself... What what does this speak towards? What kind of uh, what kind of philosophy could this perhaps be uh, embodying? And I think that's what you've got to do when you play games because uh, your 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 reflexes are, are are being used up immediately, and so you've got this other half of your brain which is just sitting there, kind of doing nothing. And you've got to give it a chance to do something. And I think it's important, uh, perhaps, for that something to be uh, you know think about your world. Uh, and so is playing this game, is playing this game for you a wonderful end to your world? Perhaps it's a wonderful end to your manic or depressive or even manic depressive Monday. Uh, and so that, so there you go, the wonderful world, Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium, no, it's not this. Uh, I would love to see a game based off that. Maybe we need to call, call the studios. Dust, a Dustin Hoffman game, I think, would be magical. But, uh... There you have it, folks. The Wonderful End of the World by Dejuban Games. Uh, so, I think I've answered your question of uh, WTF is the meaning of life in the Wonderful End of the World. And uh, and, uh let's talk about some of the graphics. And, uh, and so now it's, I think we're all done here. Uh, goodbye, my friends. See you next time.